Everybody, it's Tyler here at Riverbots High School, checking in with 355 Z Falcons coming in out of Illinois. A couple great event wins already in the Triple Crown, too. So congratulations on that success. And a lot of great things we'll be talking about with this robot as well, too. Pay attention in the front here. They have an awesome Mogo uh, mech for clamping on. Any position they're able to grab into, we'll be demoing that. But a lot of other great changes as well, too, will be going through from their intake. A uh, couple things they're doing different with their Lady Brown we'll be talking about, and some future changes with that as well, too. Sensors and a lot more. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Carter, we got to start with this Mogo mech that you've been doing and we were talking about beforehand, able to grab for any direction. So tell me more about that. We'll demo it. And then we got some other great stuff like mag plates and some stuff that your intake talk about too. Yeah. So if we spin the robot around here, you'll see there's actually like two parts of the Mogo. And this is like, this helps us basically with um, grabbing from any orientation. So you can see this part, we call it the stabilization bar. This is basically to keep the Mogo from like being upright at all time. So if we clamp here, as you can see, it shoots straight up. And the main thing you want to notice is that the hooks always have to be very close to the Mogo Meg. And this basically allows us to like tilt at any position. You'll see we have this second bar here, and we call it the extra tilt bar. Basically, uh, if you unclamp, if you're on a corner, then you get a lot less clamping pressure. And you got get like a lot less uh, like height with your clamp and tilt. So what we did is we added these two, since the Mogo is kind of like curved here and basically it helps push it up just that little bit more so it's right in line for the hooks to score. And you can see from like any orientation, you wanna run the intake? It can score from like here or if we turn it, and then here. So it can score from like any position and this really helps us with our consistency and reliability during these matches and through skills as well. And your team's been really fast, I think, on the field, too, which has been great. Yeah. So, like, combine those two, and you definitely have a lot of domination when it comes to uh, Mogul goals as well, too. Uh, talking about uh, your make points, by the way, I love teams that are Im implementing those. Yeah, so we designed these. Um, you can find them on principles.com. Just search up Vex mag plates. And basically, they allow for, like, really nice, easy swapping. As you can see, we've got a couple different sets here. Um, they're really nice to use, and they just really help us, you know, uh, quick swap our plates during these matches when we need to. Um, yeah. I noticed you got a couple different font options on there. Is it like just based on the mood or what, what determines which one to get, gets put on? Yeah, so we just like put whatever we think that looks really like nice on here. As you can see, we have like these kind of big and bold ones and then we just kind of got like this really nice and simple one. Uh, yeah, we use both of them interchangeably, which uh, really helps us like stand out against the other teams. No, definitely. Well. They look really slick, I think. So, yeah. uh, Aiden, let's talk about on your Lady Brown. You, made a couple different uh, modifications what we're seeing amongst the standard set out there in the standard meta. So talk to me more about that and then maybe some future changes you're looking to do with your Lady Brown. Yeah, so basically for our Lady Brown, we don't really have a typical Lady Brown. We actually have something called a passive Lady Brown and we basically use these gussets here if you want to lift up the Lady Brown. And basically if you we intake here, we can see the gussets change the position of the ring. And then basically what we can do is before we even get to the wall stake, we can uh, lift up our Lady Brown and drive and drive into the wall stake. So that way when we are at the wall, so that way we don't need to turn the uh, Lady Brown at the wall stake, making, us, uh, making it harder for us to be pushed around. Um, also you can see here, uh, basically we've been, uh, uh, we've been needing to put a lot of bracing uh, on our uh, Lady Brown structure because uh, it's been uh, cracking a lot since we have very uh, since we've been using uh, half channels. Uh, so basically, for the future, we're thinking about uh, adding C channels to make it much more structurally stable. 
So for making these modifications compared to the standard meta out there, have you guys been happy with how it's been performing so far? Uh, yeah, it's definitely been really uh, nice. One other nice thing about it is we can still y use it like a normal Lady Brown. Like we can drive up to the wall stake and um, score by, just by rotating. So if we if we don't want to use the passive mechanism, we can still do that. But yeah. Yeah, I was actually I was watching your last match on there, and you guys uh, were able to score from a little bit of an angle too, which I thought yeah. was great. Also, so cool stuff with that. Um, so Tony, on here, the first digit intake. We talked about kind of a uh, scoring onto the mobile goal, but talk to me about the uh, two wheeled intake that you have here. Uh, yeah. So we've definitely tried out a bunch of other designs uh, for our intake. So one of them that we thought would work really well was the uh, three ring. Um, but when you see uh, three wheels, sorry, if you have three wheels here, uh, one in the center, since the ring is like a circle here, the middle uh, wheel would grab the ring here, and these two would essentially become inactive until later pushed in. So, and like during odd times or something, and if the wheel would just be uh, sitting here, it wouldn't like intake it. So then we decided to try out two wheels, and uh, since the two wheels, they grab it here equally on the ring, helping us to push it up. And then here we have the uh, Delrin ramp to kind of help guide it up into our second stage of the intake. Um, but one of the problems that we faced was that uh, it would uh, go up into here, but it would sometimes fall out like that. So we added two strips of polycarbonate here to help uh, keep it compressed into it and then up onto the next stage. Sometimes simple things just make it work, right? Yeah. That's the cool thing about it. I love hearing about, too, like testing different configs on the wheels and stuff to try to get it right. Cool that you went with the two wheel. Uh, for that also on there. Matthew, let's talk about the uh, sensors uh, on your robot and talk to me about uh, just kind of how you're implementing the robot. And something I love to hear from programming side too, like are you looking at implementing any other sensors maybe for future events? Yeah, of course. So for outside of like odd time movements, we just have this rotational sensor, which we use just for more consistent Lady Brown movements. It just uses a PID and the input from this and just moves it with the voltage from the motor. Uh, really simple for that. For our Auton Select, we really, we started using this last year. We really like using a potentiometer. So on the brain, you can see it says our Auton. And as I spin it, you can change it. And what's really nice about this is that you can see right now it's on blue left. If I restart the program, it stays blue left. And what that allows me to do is I don't need a competition switch ever. I just use the timed run function on the controller. It's really quick and easy. We learned it from 515R and spin up. Yeah, we like, really like doing that. Um, the only other sensor we have other than motor encoders is IMU, which is there. Um, yeah, we'd use that for heading, uh, keeping it straight. Uh, we do hope to implement some tracking wheels. Right now, we just don't have that much room uh, or time right now, but we do hope to do that very soon. And you're going to combine that still with the IMU too, right? Yeah, So of course. Very cool on that. Well, Falcons, thank you so much for uh, telling us more about your robot here. Like I said, one of the quickest robots I've seen on the field and very fast scorer as well too. So good luck here at Riverbots, and congrats on a great season so far. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu vex to learn more and apply.